Good morning, everyone, uh, and thank you for joining me from wherever you are. Um, today, I want to talk to you to give you uh, an introduction to uh, battery testing techniques, and in particular, the way that they are implemented in the Gamry Potential Stat uh, universe. Firstly, uh, I want to give you a quick review of the types of battery that are uh, available. They're divided into two categories, um, primary cells and secondary cells. Primary cells uh, are, are the ones that everybody knows about, and these are the single use cells that you, uh, that you use, and then in general, you throw them away and they're used in everyday tools that, that people use like uh, TV remotes, children's toys, and uh, other devices. And uh, the most common ones of these are the alkali magnesium cells, but also you, they are uh, encompassed by the lithium, lithium coin cells that you can get that are used in watches and uh, kitchen scales and other devices like that. Uh, um, garage door remotes, things like that. The secondary cells are batteries that can be recharged many times over. Uh, the oldest and most, most well known of these is the lead acid battery, used to start uh, internal combustion engine cars and uh, as backup systems. Other examples of the uh, are nickel cadmium, and nickel metal hydride, which are also used uh, in household devices. Um, um, but the secondary batteries of uh, most interest are the lithium ion batteries that uh, today being used in many um, household electronic devices, as well as for being of interest for use in electric cars. And I'll be talking pretty much exclusively about those today. Uh, the figure on the right shows a typical setup of a lithium ion battery. So uh, in order to reach high power and high energy density, highly porous, porous materials are used as electrode materials. For the anode, graphite is attached to a copper current collector and the cathode is, has uh, lithium transition metal oxides attached to aluminum foil. An electrolyte, which can be solid, liquid, or polymeric, carries out the ion transport between the electrodes. And a separator, which is a, a membrane which is impermeable to ions, is placed between the two electrodes to prevent electrical shorts. Performance and lifetime of lithium ion batteries depends strongly on several factors. Uh, extreme temperatures can lead to material degradation. Also exceeding the rated specifications of the battery with respect to potential or charge and discharge currents can lead to irreversible reactions and overheating. Here are some examples of um, cell holders that uh, Gamry offers. Um, at the top left is a, is a holder for coin cells. Um, the top right is for 18650 size cells. And the bottom middle can take cells of different sizes up to uh, 26650 size. These cell holders are constructed with separated current and voltage sensing to eliminate contact resistance issues. To make precise and accurate measurements, 
you need to have this kind of arrangement, which is called Kelvin sensing. The initial measurement made on a battery is to measure its resting voltage. And for this, we can use an experiment that we at Gamry call read voltage. During this measurement, no current is passed in the external circuit. Let me just switch over to um, give you a demonstration in the, of the, uh, the software showing that experiment running. I've shown uh, on the slide there the, the setup screens for the experiment, but here I'll show you the actual experiment running. So I have here the uh, Gamry data acquisition program called the Gamry framework um, with a, a potential stat attached as shown up here on the top left. And I'm going to select the experiment that I want to run, which is called read voltage. And here we actually have the uh, the setup page, so it's made up of two setup pages. The initial one is just a general overview of the experiment that uh, describes the, the cell. We can put in the cell's rated capacity, um, what type of cell we have, whether it's a, a three electrode half cell or um, a, a full cell, a full battery cell, or whether we, uh, um, and then if we want to, um, where we're going to connect the positive, uh, the working lead of the um, potential stack, whether it's to the positive electrode or the negative electrode, what's the maximum voltage that we're going to expect. And we also have an int a little um, cable check that, to check that you've made the connections correctly based on these settings that you have. So when I click OK, it's going to do that cable check. And here it tells me where to connect the working and working sense to the positive electrode and uh, the counter and counter sense to the negative electrode because we're measuring a full cell. So those connections are made. I've just checked those, so it's correct. So I'm going to click OK. And then the second setup page asks us how long we want to make the measurement for, uh, how often we want to take data. And uh, there's also some stop at conditions just in case the voltage isn't stable. We can choose if the, lim if the voltage drops below a certain limit or goes above a certain limit, um, or if the change in voltage uh, um, is, too, is below a certain limit. So I'm just gonna click OK. And we'll see here that we're now measuring the voltage of a lithium ion battery. It's, uh, the voltage is around uh, 4.04 volts. So it's, it's uh, not fully charged, but it's close to fully charged. And th that experiment will last, will go for the four hours, unless it meets a limit that I set. I did not set a limit, so it'll go for the full four hours. So back to the presentation. I want to move on now to uh, experiments de designed to charge and discharge a battery. First, I'd like to give you a little introduction to some of the terminology that's commonly used. Um, C is used to indicate the capacity of the battery, which is usually me measured in amp hours. And hence the uh, C rate defines the charging or discharging rate for example, a C charge rate of one C is the current required to charge the battery in one hour. So for instance, in my case, the battery has a capacity of 1.8 amp hours. So a one C rate would be 1.8 amps. And I'll show you that in a second. Um, S SOC stands for state of charge and usually indicates how much charge is left in a battery. Fully charged is indicated by 100% SOC, SOC or state of charge. DOD indicates the depth of discharge and a gamma, and a gamma use the term uh, voltage finish 
for the, the constant voltage hold at the end of a charge step. Um, so if you do constant current, constant voltage uh, charging, we call that uh, step, that constant voltage step, voltage finish. Here I'm showing a graph um, with the current voltage behavior of a rechargeable coin cell during charging and discharging. The green curve is for the, the charge cycle and the blue curve is for the discharge cycle. During charging, the charging phase, the voltage increases steadily and lithium ions are extracted from the cathode and intercalate in the anode. The cell is then held at a constant voltage of 4.2 volts once it, uh, once it reaches uh, this limit. The, this constant voltage step lasts until the current drops below a C rate of about of, uh, 0.01 and the battery's state of charge is now 100%. During discharge, the voltage drops initially and, and following Ohm's law, this voltage drop is directly proportional to the equivalent series resistance or ESR. It's also called the IR drop. Equivalent series resistance is equal to the sum of all the resistances in the battery due to the electrodes, electrolyte separator and electrical contacts. This voltage drop affects the maximum output energy of the battery. ESR can be calculated from Ohm's law knowing the voltage drop and the discharge current. And that uh, equation for Ohm's law is shown at the top of the slide. And then the available energy in the battery is given by the equation below. So let me give you a quick demo of the demonstration of, of uh, discharge, discharging the battery. So we'll run the discharge experiment. And again, we have a setup page very much like the uh, previous one where we define a, a file name for the, the output file. We put in the battery's rated capacity. Um, we can actually, using a current interrupt method, we can measure that IR drop uh, during the experiment, but I, I won't uh, turn that on for this particular experiment. Again, we're going to choose that it's uh, the full cell type because I have a battery that I'm testing. I've, going to connect the uh, working lead of the potential step to the positive lead, to positive electrode. I expect the maximum voltage to be, no. I don't want the maximum voltage to go greater than 4.2 volts. And uh, I'm going to just, I know the connections are correct, so I'm going to uncheck the cable check this time. So on the second page, um, I'm going to choose the discharge, charge mode, there are actually several different modes. We can do constant current, uh, constant load or constant power. Um, and I can also do constant current with respect to the, uh, the C rate. So either um, a multiple of C or a, a fraction of C. In this case, I'm going to do uh, the, capac uh, the constant current uh, at a C rate of um, over C over two. Over, let's do C over four. And um, again, you need, I need to put a maximum discharge time, somewhat larger than what I expect the, the battery um, to take at that rate, based on the rated capacity. Um, so we'll put six hours, because it would be four hours, would be about what we'd expect. Uh, the sample period is how often I want to see data points. And then I'm going to set a limit for the discharge uh, to go down to the, uh, the, the rated lowest voltage that the battery can accept, which is three volts. 
and then I'm going to do the constant voltage step at the end. Uh, I'm going to hold it at that voltage until the current drops below um, C over 0 0.01, which would be 0.2 amps, 0 0.02 amps in this case. Um, and I put a certain amount, I put a time of 3600 seconds, which is an hour. I'm going to make that twice as long just just to give it more time to, for the current to drop. So I'm going to press OK. And so the, the current that is uh, selected is uh, 450 milliamps, which is a quarter of uh, the rated capacity. Uh, and you can see that the voltage, uh, the current is in the, the top graph, the voltage in the bottom. You can see that the voltage is dropping as uh, we pull out uh, current and it'll continue dropping until it reaches the limit that I set. So if we go back to the presentation. I've got a, uh, here's one I did earlier. Um, this is the, uh, a strip chart of the, uh, of the discharge of the, this battery. Um, followed by the subsequent recharge of it. Um, I did discharge at, uh, at uh, one, one amp, and then I charged it back at 500 milliamps. Um, the total length of time of that experiment was approximately 12,500 seconds, or about three and a half hours. I want to show you the effect of different discharge rates on a battery on the coin cell that I previously showed. Um, I've overlaid the discharge curves of five different discharge rates. And the graph on the right shows the uh, voltage uh, against the capacity. And the discharge rates that were chosen were 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 and 1 C. So the discharge rate decreases um, as, it, as expected, but the times are shorter than the th theoretical discharge time. These variations are mainly influenced by usage, amount, and age. The IR drop also increases with increasing C rate, which negatively affects capacity and the energy. However, the ESR drops, drops with increasing C rate, possibly due to increased temperatures within the battery. This could also lead to material degradation. Battery, battery cycling is used to test the long-term stability of a battery, and Gamry calls this experiment uh, cyclic charge discharge. Um, in this test, the battery is charged and discharged several hundred times. Here I'm showing um, the results of a standard cyclic discharge, charge discharge experiment. Um, the darker points show the capacity and the lighter points show the percentage capacity relative to the beginning. The uh, gr and the green points are for the uh, charge cycle and the, red, black, uh, the blue points are for the discharge cycle. This battery uh, shows good cycling behavior. The capacity only decreased slightly over the 100 cycles, amounting to a loss of about 4.5% over the 100 cycles. The capacity loss is due to electrolyte impurities and electrode imperfections. We can also calculate the Coulombic efficiency, um, which is the ratio of the discharge capacity to the charge capacity as a percentage. And when we do that calculation, we find that the efficiency of this battery is about 98%. So ideally, a battery's potential 
is constant when no external current flows. However, in reality, the potential decreases with time, even if a battery is not connected to an external load. This effect is called self-discharge and the current that flows internally is called the leakage current. Leakage current is measured by holding a constant potential at a, on a charged battery for a long period of time. Most battery specifications give this number after about 72 hours. Here I show the results of leakage current measurements on two batteries. One is a new one and the other one is aged by heating it to 100 degrees for a short period of time. The current was measured for four days. The red line is for the aged battery and the blue line is for the new one. The measured current after 72 hours was 4.7 microamps for the new battery and 10 microamps for the aged one. Uh, you can notice that the current is continually decreasing even after four days. So let me quickly show you that experiment as well. So we'll just um, quit this one. I'm going to measure the voltage of the battery. which may be changing a little bit. So once I get that voltage, I can then um, use that to do the leakage current experiment. So um, here we have the setup for a leakage current. It's the same, um, panel that we get for all the other experiments. Um, and then I need to set a voltage here. I'm going to put that voltage that I just measured. Uh, the parameters that I've got, the other parameters I checked previously seem to be work okay. So I'm going to set okay for that. And now we're just holding the, uh, the current um, actually because I was discharging the battery, it seems like um, that, uh, that the, the, uh, the voltage was moving a little bit. So the current that I'm pulling out of the battery is a little bit too high. It's, it's staying a bit constant, but uh, we should see that it will drop in a, in a minute, but I'll, I'll let it run and then maybe I can show you at the end of the, uh, at the end of the presentation, how it looks. So the, the other, um, the other measurement that we can make with relation to the, uh, the, the self discharge of the battery is called self discharge. And that's, uh, it's measured where, the where we follow the voltage of the battery at open circuit. Um, in the case of the battery tested here, um, the voltage was measured over nine days. Um, we measured an, a 15.6 millivolt um, drop in the voltage, which uh, corresponds to a 0.37% change with respect to the initial value. Um, And the voltage decrease is due to the internal current flow within the battery. Other techniques that are available that I'm not going to uh, talk about in detail today, but that you can uh, find out more information from previous webinars. Uh, in this case, uh, from a previous webinar that we had given by uh, Dr. Jacob Ketter. Um, you can measure the impedance spectroscopy of your battery at different charge, at different voltages and charge states um, to get some information out. And a couple of other complicated experiments that we have in the sequence wizard, the Gamry sequence wizard, 
is the potentiostatic intermittent titration technique. And here's a snapshot of some of the results uh, from this, where we step the voltage, small steps in the voltage and measure the um, current decay to a, to a certain point and then um, uh, hold, um, measure the, uh, and then open the cell and let the voltage decay and then step up again after that and do that continuously between, you would normally do it continuously between the discharge state and the charge state. Here's, this is just a snapshot between four and 4.1 volts approximately. There's also the galvanostatic intermittent titration technique, which uh, is very similar, but in this case, we uh, step between um, a constant current instead of a constant voltage, and then open the cell uh, after a, a certain amount of time. Um, and then do that continually between again between the uh, between the charge discharge and the charge state of the battery in this case we're going between 3.9 volts and 4.2 volts so just a snapshot again and uh, so that's the end of my presentation for today um, I'll just go back to the uh, to look at the uh, the leakage current test. In fact, the current is going up. So, um, uh, you, you really need to do that leakage current test once the battery has been at a steady state for quite a long time. But it is, it's just dropping a little bit, but it's, uh, but it's, it's very small because I was discharging at quite a high rate previously. So thank you very much. And uh, I guess we'll open it up to questions. Okay, thank you, David. Um, yeah, for that leakage current, you can see the effect of, of not uh, of charging, discharging, and then trying to do something right after. Um, so, but let me, let me uh, pose the first question here. I think this is a good general question. Um, is it meaningful if we investigate the coulombic efficiency versus the applied current in a charge discharge measurement? Um, so the, the columbic efficiency can give you an idea about um, how um, how uh, stable your battery is and how many cycles you, you might expect it to uh, last for. Um, and increasing the uh, discharge or the charge rate is going to um, maybe have deleterious effects on the battery. So uh, you, you probably can detect um, the limits of the, ch of the charging rate uh, by looking at that number. Of course, it's a ratio, so you, you, you also need to look at the, the overall capacity of the battery and how that changes. Okay. I don't know if anybody else has a, something to add. Um, I'm not sure. Okay. So from Gamry, I meant. From Gamry, yes. I, I don't know if the other guys are. Uh, okay. So we're having, uh, just for everybody, we're having a lot of questions coming in. And so we're trying to get to them all. Um, let me. Let me go to a, a, a simple one. Um, can you explain how to do the half cell testing for an anode material in a lithium ion battery? Um, so it's, I mean, it's very similar to the, uh, to, to the full cell. Uh, the only difference really is that um, the voltages are going to be different because you're going to have to know what the voltage, um, if, if you're using a reference electrode of some sort, maybe a lithium wire, you need to know what uh, voltage range your material is going to be over 
So when you run the experiment, um, let's say uh, you're going to do um, a discharge again, you need to, you need to know um, you need to know what voltage limits you're going to put here in your stop tests, which are going to be different from a, a full cell. But otherwise, it's going to be very similar. Okay. Um, okay. The um, well, since we since we just had leakage current up just a moment ago, uh, I have a question about leakage current. And if the applied potentiostatic voltage is not exactly the same as the cell's OCV, won't you be measuring small amounts of charge or discharge? rather than the true leakage current? Um, I, that's true. So I think that's one of the reasons why you, you probably run the test for quite a long time. Uh, the, other, the other test that you can do is, uh, is you can um, force a small change in the voltage so that you, um, you know which direction the voltage is going to go in and then, uh, then uh, measure the current as it decays. The only disadvantage of that is it's going to, um, the experiment may take longer, I think, than, uh, than, um, than in other cases, because you're obviously going to get a larger current. But uh, there is a problem with uh, that experiment because um, uh, potential stats in general don't um, apply the voltage necessarily as accurately as you would like because of this, especially in a large battery, you, a very small error in applica, applying the potential, the open circuit potential can lead to um, a large uh, change in the state of charge or not a large change, but to a large current. Okay, but eventually the the current will stabilize around the leakage current. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, okay, let me see here. Uh, here's a more general question about charge discharge. Uh, are the charge discharge experiments consecutive and how many days should they last? Um, just a simple question about what happens if the program freezes before you finish and do you lose any information? So this is pretty specific to Gamry software. Um, so the, the, obviously the, the length of time of the experiment is going to depend on the C rate that you do. So, um, the, uh, the lower the C rate, the longer the experiment is going to take and uh, you are going to do it um, um, continuously one cycle after another. Um, with respect to um, if, the, if uh, your computer freezes or, or something freezes um, for whatever reason, um, each in, a, in the, in, in the Gamry um, framework each experiment is actually independent so um, the data will be saved at the end of each uh, charge or discharge cycle um, if uh, you have an interruption um, of the uh, of the communication between the uh, potential stat and the computer for some reason then assuming the computer stays uh, switched on you should actually uh, still uh, have the data up to the point where the interruption took place, which should, should get automatically saved. Did I answer all the questions? Uh, there's a there's a lot coming in. I'm trying no, no, to. I mean, did no. I answer the, all the that parts question. of that question? Yes. Yes, that's good. Do you have anything to add? No, I think it's just important that yes, each each individual step will be saved. So even if the 
you know, it, the, the experiment goes for days and days or months, um, you're saving all the data up to that point, even if the computer freezes. I'm going to butt in just very briefly because uh, if he's getting a lot of questions. There are several other co-hosts here. If you raise your hand, somebody will contact you. If you just address questions directly to Chris or somebody else, they may be overwhelmed and you may not have your question even seen. So please raise your hand if you want to ask a question. Thank you. Uh, David, I have a, a pretty uh, general question. When using a, a potentiostat stat to set up a charge discharge cycle, should the first cycle be a discharge for anode material? Um, I'm not sure uh, it, ma it matters. Um, but uh, for mo most of these types of experiments, you would uh, charge the battery. And if it, I don't know if you're talking about a, a material, it's obviously slightly different. I, I would say that you, char you start from the, uh, um, in the case of a full battery, you're going to char start from the charge state and you're going to uh, condition the battery probably at the beginning uh, for a period of time. Uh, to, to make sure that it's uh, fully charged uh, and before you start your um, experiment. Uh, in the case of um, half cell measurements, um, I guess you want to uh, start from the state where, um, where the material is, uh, where the lithium is intercalated into the material. Which will be actually be different in the, the in the between the two between the two um, electrodes because in one one case that's the charge state and the other one it's the discharge state of, if it was a battery. Okay, uh, but, uh, it probably doesn't matter as long as you um, know what it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a question about um, actually a setup screen um, since we're at framework for the discharge experiment. Uh, can you pull that up? So there's three options here for cell type, half, full, and both. Can you explain what both means? So um, both only applies to the potential stat that I'm using right now, which is called the Interface 5000. Um, and that allows you to measure um, uh, the voltage of the, um, we can measure the voltage of the anode, the cathode, and the, if there's a reference electrode in the middle, we can measure the reference with respect to that reference electrode as well. So uh, like, like you might say in a half cell measurement, if you had a, a full cell, uh, but it had a reference electrode inside, we could measure all three of those. All, all uh, the, the, We could measure the voltage of the anode and the cathode with respect to the, um, with respect to the reference. And that requires a slightly different arrangement of the, uh, of the electrode leads. And that's what the cable check will do. So I do that. Uh, put the cable check on. We're now going to attach the uh, reference electrode to whatever reference point that you have in your cell. Uh, before, I don't know if you noticed that it said connect the reference electrode to ground. But now it says connect the reference electrode to reference. Okay. Uh, I have a question here. How is, e uh, how is ESR calculated? Uh, so it's calculated from Ohm's law. If you look at the, uh, um, uh, 
uh, where is it here? This is basically a re, um, re representation of Ohm's law. So this is V equals I R. Um, so R is V divided by I. So this V uh, is the, the voltage drop that you get when you first apply the uh, current. So if you charge your battery to 4.2 volts, uh, that initial drop that you see, the first measured point, would give you that um, would give you that uh, that voltage drop, and then you know the current that you applied because it's a constant current experiment. So it's, that's the calculation. Okay. Uh, Jacob or Andrew or Jerome, do you guys uh, have any questions while I try to pull t some more together? I have one here. Uh, two parts. Um, well, two distinct. Uh, the first one is what method is used to calculate capacity loss in the cyclic charge discharge? Is it based on maximum voltage or another method? And if you want to take that, and I'll come back with the second one you, after you finish. Uh, I'm not sure I understand the question. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, the I, best guess is is going to be another method because it always charges to the same voltage using the cyclic charge discharge because you specify what voltage it's charging to. So it's the total capacity that goes in. Well, you can follow, the, I mean, that graph uh, I showed follows the here below this this uh, these lines here at the bottom hold on let me um i can pull up the pointer so these two uh, sets of data here this is the capacity as a function of cycle so here on this on the left hand axis is the capacity um it was a small coin cell so it was only 30 you know, so here is 30 milliamp hours. And so you can see that the capacity is dropping from about um, 27 or 28 uh, at the start to around 25 at the end. So all the, for, the, for the green line, which is the uh, charge capacity, and the blue line is the discharge capacity. So it's... Um, dropped to around just below 24 after the 100 cycles. Do you think that answers? Um, yeah, I will get more follow-up for if we need, but that sounds about right. The other question here is what is the response time of the Gamery Potentia stat? They would like to switch applications um, where the current profile with fast switching is applied to a lithium ion battery. So, yep. Uh, and we're talking about pulses or just between the charge and the, the, the transition from the charge to the, comp, the voltage finish? Uh, this looks, sounds more like Pulsing uh, current profile with fast switching sounds like it's being switched on and off. Hmm. Um, that's something in the specifications which I don't have at my hat fingertips right now. Um, but um, it's on the order of you know. Um, microseconds i mean um yeah microseconds or below depending on which potential state you're talking about probably your battery can't uh, respond as fast as a potential state can respond but i'm not sure about that David? Yeah. I had a 
a comment come up from one of our viewers, uh, Satarshi. Uh, she said, and this was in reference to the question about whether you should charge or discharge a half cell first. Um, in the case of, let me see if I, in the case of if your anode is a lithium foil, um, you tend to want to uh, discharge it first. And the reason being is that um, you wanted lithium ions to be sent to the anode material first, right? From all of and that was the comment, so. Okay. And uh, follow up on that, she said that, or he, he or she, I don't, um, is to discharge it first if the material being tested does not contain any lithium. Uh, I'm speaking for this person just because uh, their mic isn't working properly, so. Okay. And yeah, the example is, is like a graphite or any common anode is to discharge it. Okay. And that intercalates the lithium? Um, I myself wouldn't know, but uh, uh, yes. The answer was yes. She, he, he or she. He. They. They, well. <laughs> That, that's that's what I got. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, that's helpful. Okay. I, I I pretty much have very specific questions left, so I'm going to be working on following up uh, with emails for those because they seem to be specific to somebody's setup. Um, does anybody have any more general questions? Uh. Yeah, somewhat. Uh, using the CCCV or constant current, constant voltage charge technique, can they charge the battery up to a certain capacity? For example, charge up to 80, 90 percent state of charge with one C rate. So, uh, yeah, you can do that because you can set the limit. Um, Let's say, uh, so it requires you to know the, the capacity of your battery, obviously, which you can measure. Um, so if we do a charge, um, what you can do is you can set a limit here. Uh, okay, I thought you could set a limit. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can do it. Yes, in the sequence wizard with the variable. In the sequence wizard, yeah? Yep. So if we charge it, we can set here um, a charge limit. So that uh, is not necessarily a um, that's a number in amp hours. So if we put in the capacity correctly, for instance, and you wanted to uh, say it's two and you wanted to go to 90%, so you put here 1.8 amp hours for 90% of the, uh, the capacity. Uh, and then it would stop. If it, did, if it reached that capacity before it reached the 4.2 volts, um, then, uh, then it would, uh, it would uh, stop charging it. Um, and there are other um, uh, variable calculations that you can do in the sequence wizard to uh, to to, um, to measure the total capacity and then do a calculation on that to set a limit or something like that. Um, which is a little bit beyond the scope of this uh, talk, but uh, um, we can probably follow up with an email if necessary, if somebody wants to know. Okay. Okay.
Okay, so I think that's I think that about does it for the for other general questions. Um, just to then to sort of wrap things up, uh, thank you everybody for attending. Uh, we do have another uh, webinar slash presentation scheduled for next week, but it's more of a live uh, interactive session. Andrew's going to be uh, he's got a couple instruments uh, ready to go, and we can answer questions uh, that you might have. So there's not so much a uh, PowerPoint presentation as opposed to a live demo of, of some of our equipment and our software. So if you have questions on that, please uh, join us, uh, register, and then, and then please join us. Um, and again, we've recorded this so that we will uh, make the recording available. Look for our Friday Focus tomorrow uh, for the link in that if you would like to see that. And anybody who submitted questions uh, that are rather specific. Please make sure we have your name and email address and we will follow up separately in an email. Uh, so thank you again, everybody, and have a good day, a good afternoon, or a good evening. <laughs>